Roland. All right, welcome to uh, Bobcat Stadium here in Bozeman, Montana. As you can see behind us here, uh, kind of a rainy day. Temperatures in about the 50s. Um, it, it's going to be a rarity for both, both North Dakota and Montana State. Uh, I was just talking with a Montana State official earlier. Said it's, uh, they don't see a lot of rain on game days here. A lot of snow, maybe some cold weather, but rain is unusual. UND obviously plays in the Alaris Center. Has played in a lot of uh, indoor stadiums in the last couple of years. Um, trying to kind of figure out when the last real rain impacted game was. Uh, Mike Manasso was referencing back to 1996, so I'm going to try to find one before then, but we'll see. Uh, Tony, Tony Landry here with me from uh, UND Athletics, uh, helping out uh, the radio broadcast today. Tony, what, uh, what do you think the, the weather's going to play into this game? You know, when you look at a, a game like this with the weather, it's obviously going to slow down your passing attack right away and you know everybody's going to kind of go to the ground right away which I think is going to help UND kind of set that pace for their running game when you look at Norberg kind of his first full start first real game action in bad weather it'll really make uh, it'll, it'll make for an easier transition for him where they're not going to have to go to the air right away and when you play a team like Montana State who wants to move the ball as fast as possible allowing UND to move the ball on the ground and eat up some clock time is really going to help them out. And I think you have a team like UND whose defense is need, going to need to thrive off turnovers. Uh, best way to maybe get some slippery hands is to have a wet surface, a wet ball. Uh, that can't hurt. Obviously, UND coming in as the underdog would take any sort of external factor to give them any sort of advantage. Um, but it's also one of those things, does it slow down the pass rush? Does it, does it make it more difficult to make one-on-one -on -one tackles in space? So, you know, you can kind of argue both sides of this, but for the most part, you're right. I think a, uh, anything that helps slow this game down and get it into more of a physical uh, game that, that goes towards Kyle Norberg's strengths as a running back is going to be beneficial to UND. Um, other than that, outside of uh, kind of the weather implications, we're looking at uh, a defense from UND that's coming off its best performance of the year against Stony Brook, but is going up against a Montana State offense. Uh, high prolific offense, scored 51 points and lost last week, surprisingly, to Eastern Washington. Um, a team scoring 40 plus, UND right around nine points a game. Uh, what is UND's defense going to have to do to to try to slow these guys down? Yeah, when you look at the two offenses they're going to play from last, you know, last week to this week, where Stony Brook was, they they spread you out a little bit, but they still wanted to kind of control tempo. The Bobcats are just going to they're going to try to run as many plays as they can in as fast a time as humanly possible. Defensively, they did play very well last week against Stony Brook. This is a completely different team. Uh, staying assignment sharp is really going to be what they're going to have to do because this is a team that when they have the opportunity to run a big play, they're going to expose you for that. So this is a, a game that if UND wants to continue to move forward with their, you know, their new theory of defense and they're, they're playing solid defense, this is going to be a big test for them. And I think it's going to be you know, a game where, like you said, if you can get some wet hands on a football, like last week with Alex Tillman going 90 plus yards on an interception, something like that to kind of turn the tide on Montana State. Yeah, and uh, you know I think it should be an interesting one here. UND's not going to be able to fall behind early. They just don't don't have that kind of offense that can come back by whipping it around. They're going to have to avoid that 28 point second quarter like we saw in the Alaris Center last year that led to Montana State's 63-20 win. Um, UND's had two tough outings against Montana State. This will be a little bit of a test to see what kind of improvement uh, the team can make. So. Uh, thanks for watching here on GrandForceHero.com and uh, check back for, for some post-game thoughts.